for food, water is for energy. We could not survive without water, so of course this is a very important topic. So the Institute of Environmental Engineering at the ETH has a lot of research going on related to water in hydrology and water resources management, in groundwater topics, as well as in urban water management topics. In addition, there is research going on about the origin of water, glaciology, and studies related to water quality in rivers and lakes, for example. The project uh, refers to the area of uh, Jakarta, which is the capital city of Indonesia. And the problem there is that uh, the main river flowing through the town has been increasingly under pressure due to enormous immigration. And the urban footprint increased more than 200 times in the last 40 years. The focus of the research is to try to demonstrate that it's possible to have a new paradigm in rehabilitating urban river corridors. And the idea is that we combine different technologies based on different disciplines, so environmental engineering and numerical modeling of water sciences, together with advanced surveying based on the generation of cloud point data sets and landscape architecture. And finally, also considering ecosystem services. So bringing together all these disciplines should provide a different view on how problems in urban river corridors can be mitigated. For instance, flooding and pollution, just to name a few of them. My research is about glaciers. We want to observe or to investigate how the glaciers move in general. We observe the so-called ice quakes instead of earthquakes. And the ice quakes, they always happen every 10 seconds. And with that, we can get some information about how the glacier itself moves and what happens also below the glaciers. In general, we put the classical seismometers on the glacier connected with the receiver or a digitizer and some solar panels for energy. And with that, we just measure continuously what's going on. So every time when, for example, a crevasse opens, it cracks and these cracks are visible on our seismometers. As we all know, the glaciers are shrinking in general. And we want to know if we have a rising temperature, warmer climate, how can it influence the, the sliding of the glacier, meaning the shrinking of the glacier. One theory is that it was already there from the beginning, but that can be challenged because it was very hot in that area. The other one is that comets delivered the water to Earth, and we are looking at meteorites. We do analyze these meteorites, for example, with a mass spectrometer. A mass spectrometer is an instrument where we can measure how many atoms of an element are present in a sample. So we do know then how much water is in a sample. And from that we can make interpretations. Our results indicate that the water on Earth was there already in the building blocks of the Earth. And the comets only delivered a very small fraction. Just looking at the science question, we do satisfy a basic curiosity of mankind because we need water to explain life on Earth.
one of the big challenges is the increasing uh, growing world population and we would like to feed that world population well which means we need a better content in the food products that we have in terms of macro and, um, and micronutrients. On the other hand, we also try to produce um, a more resource efficient, which means with less emissions, for example, in terms of nitrogen or methane. And on the other hand, we also have that um, dilemma between food as a normal diet versus lifestyle, which tackles then and addresses questions of ethics, for example, of animal welfare. Rice fields, because they're flooded, the, the soils are under anaerobic conditions and they emit large amounts of the very potent greenhouse gas methane. In uh, upland cropping systems like your wheat systems or maize systems, uh, there's a lot of emissions of nitrous oxide which are basically derived from the fertilizer that is being applied. There's actually only about 50% of the fertilizer that is applied that is taken up by the plant and there are a lot of microbes in the soil that uh, perform various transformations of that nitrogen and one of those transformations leads to the emission of nitrous oxide. Currently we are doing a greenhouse experiment uh, where we're looking at the potential for uh, crops with bigger rooting systems to be able to capture more of nitrogen in the soil so less gets lost. The losses of nitrous oxide itself are very small, but in terms of greenhouse gas, it's a very important loss because uh, the global warming potential of nitrous oxide is about 300 times larger than that of CO2. So even though those losses are minimal, in terms of climate change, they have a very important role to play. Zinc is an essential nutrient element. If we do not have sufficient zinc, our growth is retarded, our immune system is weakened, and we are more susceptible to infection with pathogens. Our trials are in Madhya Pradesh. This is a state in India which is in the center of India. The soils on which we are focusing are soils which have sufficient zinc the problem is that this zinc is bound in the soil, so the plants have difficulties to take it up. What we want to do is to improve the conditions in the soil so that the plants can take it up more easily. And this is done by improving the organic matter in the soil, because organic matter provides zinc to the plants. There are estimates by the World Health Organization that there are more than one billion, some people say uh, two billion people in the world who suffer from marginal to more uh, severe zinc deficiency. So it's uh, a motivation of course that we like to do something where we have the potential that it helps uh, mankind. Meat consumption is always an ethical problem because people want to eat meat and this means animals have to be killed. And in the case of chicken the problem is male 
chicken cannot be used for production of eggs. So therefore, you don't have any use for them and they have to be killed. We are trying to find in the existing genetics a breed which is able to produce meat and eggs at a satisfying level. We don't want to create a new breed. We want to check what is existing in the genetics. The products will be more expensive, so therefore it will be crucial how consumers will react to this price increase. Are they willing to pay a premium for more animal welfare? And I think that's an open question. And it's also an open question how many consumers are be willing to pay for animal welfare. large challenges, they come uh, due to the uh, complex interactions that we have in this entire food system, which goes from production uh, to processing to retail to the consumer and how the consumer actually responds. And we produce and we act in that food system with changing environmental conditions, be it climate change, but we also have degrading soil resources, we have a scarcity of resources, be it nutrients like what we need for fertilizers or also for water with irrigation. On the other hand, I think as researchers we also have the duty to work on relevant problems, relevant for society and relevant for the future. And these are the two main criteria um, why I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs>